white man brought Christianity to Africa, took our land, parents away in chains, Islamic group Murek. An Islamic rights advocacy group, Muslim Rights Concern Murek on Friday described the denial by oil state government that it has plans to return schools to the missionaries as political masturbation. The government has said it had no plan to restore some schools to missionaries or individuals. This was contained in a statement signed and issued on Sunday in Ibadan by the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Mr. Abdurrahman Abdurrahim. However, Mirik challenged the state governor, Shay Makinde, was trying to return the state to days of slavery when the white man brought Christianity and took land from many Africans as slaves. In a statement released by its director, Professor Ishak Akintola, the group said Makinde denied there was such a plan to deceive Muslims into voting for him for a second term in office. The group therefore stated that it would not relent in its struggle to ensure the state government did not return any public schools in the state to missionaries. Oh wow. So in his statement, it reads, We do not believe in Makinde. His sudden U-turn is politically motivated. The statement at best can be described as political masturbation. Makinde's body language is saying something different. Muslims of Oyo State are too clever to allow... Makinde's damage control tactics to deceive them. We will not let down our guards. We are waiting for the governor in whatever form he comes. We don't trust him. Caesar has crossed the Rubicon. Islamic liberation theology has exposed the anatomy of slavery. The slave master came from Europe and America at the initial stage with the Bible in his hands. He told Africans to close their eyes. When they opened it, they found only the Bible, their land, was gone. Slavery is in stages. The invasion of Africa by the slave traders was the first stage. The white men came and took our parents away in chains. Our precious artifacts were taken away to Britain, France, and Germany. The Slave Abolition Act of 1833 forced the slave merchants to design another means of cultural economic exploitation of the African people, and this led to the second stage of slavery when they came with education as a weapon. Muslims were the main victims of this second phase as they forcefully converted to Christianity in their millions. The federal government's takeover of schools in 1975 reduced the influence of the missionary schools, but this did not totally stem the tide of oppression, intimidation, and harassment of Muslim students. The missionary schools, as remnants of colonial legacy, still want to control, and that is a casu belli of the struggle between Muslims and well, Muslims in the Southwest and the missionaries today. The missionaries are bent on starting phase three of the slavery project with Muslims as target victims. That is why they are demanding the return of schools. We warn that any governor who attempts to return schools to the missionary has endorsed the third phase of enslavement of Muslims. He has declared war on Muslims. We will resist this with every legitimate tool at our disposal. It is modern slavery, no more, no less. It is neo-colonialism. We will rather be free in our graves than live like puppets and slaves. Makinde wants to abdicate his responsibility towards the Oyo electorate. That is why he is planning to return to school. We will not allow that. The return of schools was not part of his manifesto in 2019. Otherwise, we would not have voted for him. The Elei of Agodi should allow the sleeping lying to lie. Okay, fine. This man is very much, sounds very agitated. And there are several sides to this argument. And the fact is that before Christianity came, Islam was in Africa through the Arab slave trade. And so in that way, I mean, the Arab slave trade has been so hidden and has become such a taboo subject. Or he has literally just been overtaken and overrun by the transatlantic slave trade that no one talks about how horrible it was and how black men were literally being castrated i mean horrible things also happened to us so before we start the argument on what religion was brought and the way it was brought we have to understand that islam christianity and anything else that is really not african came in ways that you can argue of course are inhumane so now if this is the argument of whose religion has got it better or what religion practices it on a more I don't know, 
organic level christians and muslims cannot argue on that fact if anything we are practicing something that is literally not us if we are going to be honest about what we're practicing so this obviously has now come from so now where he's coming from is emanating from the oil state government in which obviously it denied plans to return schools to missionaries and first of all there isn't really much information as to what kind of schools were given back to missionaries if in this case he's talking about specific i guess muslim schools then that is a whole different conversation and you can say that in that case he has a right you know being um obviously part of Muric to speak against that but it's a general it just said school so there isn't also much information as to how the Oyo state government planned to return schools to missionaries that really would not make sense but I think this really is an indirect jab at Christians, to be very honest, out of the fact that he is very hurt from this move. First of all, it is advisable that he understands the history of also how Islam came into Nigeria. Because really, Christians and Muslims arguing over defending their faith is absolutely pointless. Why? Because as Africans, we are not even doing what is original to us. So who is Boo Boo the Fool here? Really. So if we're really going to argue as to who fell for what and the the politics and the context and the technicalities as to how slavery started i mean it is a very big and very sensitive argument but i just advise that if isha kakintala has personal problems with the United state government then that needs to be sorted out and another big thing that i've also seen correct me if i'm wrong is also the burning and continuous narrative of defending the faith and i think this mentality whether it's adopted by christians and muslims is causing a lot of problems why because we can get very short-sighted as to what the problem actually is sitting on the side of offense and we literally start yabbing in a very much different insensible direction and that is literally just what it is listen this is the reason why history is so important to us. Professor, you, so you don't even know the history. Arabs started slavery and invited Europeans into the business. And it actually started, what, in the 7th century or 11th century? That is why we will stop killing, that is why we should stop killing ourselves because of religion. These people have another plan in mind in coming to Africa and it worked for them. Well, can't really argue against that. They say he's a professor. I keep wondering, professor of what? His statements make him or portray him as uneducated. This man does not like Christianity for anything. And then this is what the problem is. We start to find other theories that would say, oh, he doesn't like Christianity. Is I mean, this is so backwards. And for the fact that we are still arguing about this up till date is a very big problem. Put what you think about it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.